Hey everybody, welcome back to NSB Custom Cars. So it's been uh, two or three weeks since uh, the last video that we put out. That's when we went to the drift track and did a little bit of drift racing there. But uh, from that time forward, uh, starting uh, Labor Day or Memorial Day, we, uh, I took a, a week's vacation. I went back up to Tennessee and pretty much did nothing. I actually took a vacation for a change instead of going up there and working and doing stuff. And I had a pretty good time though. I well needed, needed the time off. So uh, I come back uh, and of course, you know, when you're off vacation for a week, nobody does your job for you. So when you come back, you got a lot to do. So the last week, week and a half, I've been getting caught up. I pretty much got caught up at work. So we're back into the garage here this weekend. And I've got several things that uh, we're gonna do. But before then, let me get you caught up. Uh, you know, the main purpose of these videos is I'm building cars and the car that I build, I'm offering to every, everybody that's, that watches my video, they're going to have the first opportunity to buy the car and everybody knows the first car that I'm doing at this point, 1966 Satellite, which is still in the body stage where I'm putting on Bondo and sanding. And, uh, you know, it, all the cars that I've ever done, you know, I've wham, bam, knocked them cars out. Do the body work, do primer, paint it, and get it out. The bad thing about that, sometimes, you know, when you're doing that and watching other shows and how other people do it, body work takes time. Paint takes time. And a lot of it's cure time. And I've over, you know, not overlooked it, but there's a lot of times that I've tried to cut corners and knock out a paint job and then down the road you have things come back up on the car in my super b being one of them you know i went through this car pretty quick and i've got stuff on it that i need to address it's going to have to be painted again it's a 10 year old paint job i've got things that came up some little rust spots because this car was full of rust to begin with so it's kind of hard to get all that the first time especially under a carport where i built this car at so uh so on the yellow car, pretty much the way I'm doing this on, on this one is I'm putting some Bondo on, I do take it down some, and then I'm letting it sit, let it cure, give it a couple weeks, two or three weeks. In this case, it's been almost a month. So I'm going to be putting some more Bondo on the car, sanding it down, putting more Bondo on where I've already put Bondo on, so it takes time. I am going to document it, I'm going to take some video, but I'm not going to take every week or every two weeks and, and show y'all a bunch of body work and what I'm doing. I'm going to get this all compiled up and it'll be one video. I'll go through the body work and get, at least get it to primer and that'll be a video for you to watch and, and I'll have it. So it's over in the next area over here. I got my tent set up over there that I used to have for a paint booth when it was over by my carport. So it's over beside the garage. I got the car in it so I can do some body work off and on and, and then let it sit and cure, prime and all that. It's not getting my garage dirty. So that's still going on. And in between all the cure time when it's just sitting, I've got other things to do. We got uh, the drag car, which uh, you know we had to put the clutch and stuff in. It's all finished, it's on the trailer, it's ready to go to the track. So. Hopefully either a, a Sunday or a Wednesday, because that's when they do a kind of a test tune thing at the track where we're not ready to go to the track and just start racing. We still got some kinks to work out and make sure everything's working right. So that'll be coming down the pipe. Uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get some more video on that. And plus I want to take my Super B back, but I've got some things I'm going to be doing to it. So let's bring us today on this video where we're going to, what we're going to be doing is on my Super B. Now, before I left to go on vacation, I took the computer, which runs all the EFI, all the electronics that I've got on this car. And it was the, uh, you know, made by Fast. It was a 2.0 EZ. It was self-tuning. Pretty much, you put the computer on, you put all your hardware for your fuel line, your fuel, fil you know, fuel filter, fuel pump, all that stuff. Put your valve, your uh, EFI valve body piece on. Pretty much the carburetor, what would be, and uh, 
put all your parameters in on your little handheld, everything, you know, your motor size, you fire the car up and as you drive the car, it self tunes. It'll tune itself, it'll put it where it needs to be running and go. Well, for some reason, my car decided that it didn't want to learn no more. I put a brand new O2 sensor on it. I've got no codes coming up in it. And I'm driving it and the little light that tells you that it's tuning is never coming on. It's not tuning. I'm getting too much gas. It's blacking the, the plugs and the, the pipes. You're getting a lot of gas smell. So at that point, I've decided that uh, I'm going to take that off and I'm going to upgrade. So I took the computer off, I took the handheld out, I sent it back to Fast, and they upgraded me to the Sportsman series. Now, doing that gives me the opportunity that if I want to put a supercharger, a pro charger, anything on this car, I can now. With the, with the self-tuning, you couldn't put a blow-through on it. The uh, system would take it, it's just the computer won't. So I had to have all that done to even do that. So I sent it back. I just got it back, actually Friday, which was yesterday, today, Saturday. So I got it back, so I was ready to go on the car. Now, unfortunately, you know, it's not self-tuning, so there's a lot to this. Just, you have to put your laptop in there. It comes with a program. You put the program in the laptop, and now you've got everything. You have to tell this car everything. You know, where you want your fuel mixture, where you want your timing and all that. It's no different than when you're watching Street Outlaws, they're tuning their car. This is what this is going to do. The same thing. Also, I've been having a problem with the car not starting after it gets to, war to, to, to a uh, running temperature. I can start it up, drive it down the road, it gets to running temperature, which is 175 to 180 and I stop at a gas station or stop and kill it, I come back out and won't go start it, don't want to start. It's, when I say not wanting to start, it's not wanting to turn over. It's act like it's low voltage or the starter's not coming in all the way. I don't know what's going on with it. It almost kind of makes me think like it's vapor locking, but I know that's not happening. So I've decided that I'm gonna change some things before I even put the new computer back on. And one of them is, I'm getting rid of, I got two batteries in the trunk. I'm getting rid of the batteries and I'm going down to one battery. I've got an optimal battery that I bought brand new. Still in the box. Nice red top. 850 crank and amp battery. Also bought a complete Taylor aluminum battery box. Comes with all your wire, new wire, everything. So I'm gonna change all that out. Also got another mini torque high torque starter which is on this car it's the same starter that's on the drag car that drag car's got a 500 cubic inch uh high compression and it whips that thing over like it's nothing so this one is pretty much a stock 440 motor with a camshaft in it as far as the bottom end it's not a high compression motor other than it does have some aluminum closed chamber heads so the compression did come up this motor came out of, out of a motor home that uh, I purchased. It has six pack rods that came in the motor home, steel crank, but the pistons were down in the hole. The motor home was at eight and a half to one. It was a 78 or 79 the last year they made the 440, so this was the last year that they made this motor. When I rebuilt this motor, had everything balanced, I did put instead of the cast pistons that they had in it, I put forged pistons in it. They were a little taller, but they're still down in the hole. And putting the closed chamber aluminum heads instead of having the, the cast iron open chamber heads, I probably brought the compression up to nine and a half to one, I'd say. But I wanted that for a reason that if I decide to put a pro charger or a supercharger on there, you need to be down in the hole. You need lower compression. So I'm set up that I can do that even though right now I've got nitrous on it. So we should be all right at this point. So this video, we're going to uh, tear this thing back apart as far as the battery, some wiring. I got to take the exhaust off. Also, I forgot to tell you, 
you know, I got those new header gaskets. This does have a leak on one side, so I got the new, the new header gaskets that I showed you. I'm going to put them on, which the header's got to come off and get the starter off on this. So, I mean, opportunity knocks, we're going to strike at it. So, uh, that's pretty much it. We're going to uh, get started on this car, tearing it down, and uh, get it back together. Let me show you before I start on it real quick. There's my new box. You know, the old box was the, uh, the old black one. It's pretty much identical looking. Still has all the lights coming across on it. It's just a red box. This is the Sportsman Series uh, EFI. It's going to let you do a whole lot more than what that other box is going to do. So pretty much, you know, bolt this on, plug it in, and it's, you know, ready to go other than all the computer programming. You know, you got where you plug in your computer at. They also... Uh, had to reflash my handheld. With the old system, everything that I did, I punch it right here in my little handheld, tell it what size motor it is, where I want my timing at, everything's all done here. Now, I have to do this on a computer. So, this is pretty much a dashboard. It's gonna show you everything, it's gonna show you RPM just like it used to, tell you where all your parameters are at, but the change to do anything, you have to do it from laptop. So, that was the, uh, the other upgrade that I've done for, for this, so let's get started. All right, so pretty much step one, I'm going to start with the hard part. We're going to get these headers off and get my header gaskets on, and while the header's off, I can get the starter off. If we get all that done, then we'll go to the trunk and get this battery put in, and I'm probably about to move a few wires around, because like I said, I had two batteries in the back. I got some wires going to one battery, some to the other. Now they're all going to go to one, so I'm going to have to do a little bit of work there. Also, this is Florida. It's hot. I'm running my fans. So you got a little fan noise in the video, but it's either that or, or a lot of sweat. So, uh, let's get these headers uh, off, and the first thing I'm going to have to do is get this car in the air and I'm going to take pretty much the exhaust off. The way I got this set up, well, you'll see, it just comes off pretty nice. So, uh, pretty much the way I have my exhaust system, you know, they come out in front of the back tire, which I know I've had some comments, people don't like seeing them come out the side. I like it. And it makes it a whole lot easier to disassemble. For one, all you have to do, take the three bolts on each side of your header collector, off and right over here I got a muffler clamp right here which goes to a muffler hanger I loosen these two nuts it comes right off this hanger on both sides and then with the uh, my Y pipe put in all this stays together it'll drop right down and I can set it right over on the side and my exhaust is out of the way so let's get that off Slide back and let her down. exhaust system off the car in five minutes. Not many cars you can take exhaust off like that. I designed that so I could take it off and on. If I wanted to go to the track, put some shorties on here, make it loud, whatever, that comes right off, go right back on. So, makes it a lot easier. There's my complete exhaust system. So, all you haters that don't like the exhaust coming out in front of the tire, don't knock it until you try it. I do want to show you, you can see how dark those plugs are. So it was running pretty rich. But I do have one plug that uh, looked like it may have not been firing. It didn't sound like it had a miss. But it's awful clean looking. I don't know. We're going to have to investigate. 
number eight cylinder. So we got everything complete. The battery's in, the starter's in, the header's back on. I even put the box back in. So let's go take a look at everything. So there's our new EFI. That's the uh, Sportsman Series box. It's fully programmable. I got both the headers back on with new header gaskets put in. I did find a leak on that header. I had to weld a hole up. But uh, that's kind of hard to see. There's a brand new starter hood on it. And that coiled up wire right here. That was the wire that was on it. And it is a little smaller than what's on it now. It came all the way back to a new battery. Got the battery box in. Got the trunk all nice and cleaned up. There's my optimal battery. This is the ground wire and the hot wire that runs the EFI. They say bring it straight to the battery, so it is. And the other ones runs the stereo. So at this point, it's not been started or anything. Don't know if we're going to run or what. We got to uh, put a program in, so we got to take this rubber plug off, which is actually right in here. Right up underneath the bottom, and you gotta plug in your cable. A little black plug goes over it. I gotta put my handheld back in the car, too. But here's the cable, comes with it. Also came with the thumb drive. That's what's got the program for the EFI. You don't want to lose that. It'd been nice if that had a way that, that could stay in that 24 7. Yeah, I know, 1969 didn't come out with a pistol grip, but you can't tell me that when they did come out that whoever bought a 1969 didn't run down and buy the shifter so they could put it in their car. Or if the dealer had some left over and they was trying to push them, just to put one in it and sell it from the dealership with a pistol grip just to make them go. Either way, I think they look good and I like them. Next step is computer time. So put in the parameters for your motor. It's a 440. What else? Number of injectors is eight. Map sensor, we just got the one bar sensor. Fuel energy cons constant, one. Number of cylinders, eight. Injector flow rate, 74 pounds per hour. And we do have the easy uh, five throttle body apply. So now what do we got to do? Figure out all this crap. <laughs> well, it looks good. Like I said, 13 to 5, I'm saying we should they start there. They put numbers in it for you, shouldn't it? Don't you? Yeah. Then we can play with it from there. Yeah. So it comes preloaded pretty much to run.
All right, now that we've got uh, everything pretty much finished up, it's time to take it for a test drive. We've got pretty much programmed in. Uh, we've test run it some, so this week it was raining every day after work. I couldn't drive it, so now we're back to the weekend again. So nice and sunny. It is supposed to rain today, so we're going to get out and see how it runs. This still has a small learn feature in it that helps level everything out once you get your primary numbers put in. So we need to drive it some and uh, let it clear itself up. And we'll see what's going on with it.
So the test drive went pretty good. Uh, had to do a little bit more tweaking. Is wanting to stumble on takeoff, but got that cleaned up. Uh, everything's doing good on it. So pretty much uh, got my exhaust leak fixed. Got my starting problem fixed. That's with a battery, no new wiring, battery box, battery, everything in that one's new starter. And we got our flooding out problem where we're just getting too much gas. So we're completely programmable now. So don't forget to like us. Uh, be all of this one. Until next time.